independence for dy dynamic mechanical testing, and we've kind of tiptoed around a little bit about how temperature uh, can affect the mechanical properties of material, but now we want to focus on this kind of, again, time temperature uh, equivalence of polymer materials. Specifically, you know, it's time, time, temp, and really strain rate uh, as well. So remember, if our if we have a high strain rate, that is equivalent to our temperature being low and our time being very, very, very short times. This all corresponds very, very high. All of these scenarios are fairly equivalent in terms of our polymers most likely going to behave like plastic solid. So at high strain rates, low temperatures, and at very, very short times, again, just as we saw in kind of all of our techniques, elastic solid. And if we're reversed, so if our strain rate is very low, think about our silly putty. If our temperature is very high and our time is very long, we are going to behave more like a viscous solid or viscous fluid. So you can see kind of the temperature dependence uh, of our stiffness versus temperature on a plot below, uh, so we're going to see in just a second. So let's look at mechanical behavior of our polymeric materials. So at very low temperatures below Tg, you see that our, again, E prime, which is our storage uh, storage modulus, the elastic contribution, very, very high. Glassy material frozen in place. But as you increase temperature, that stiffness begins to drop precipitously. And it drops because we transition, we undergo that glass transition. Second order thermodynamic transition from glassy to rubbery. So it drops and then again it stabilizes for a, you know a little bit in that region until if we're if we are semi-crystal material, we'll melt again, we flow, and then you get an, another precipitous drop. So you can look at these plots and kind of determine a lot about polymeric materials that you might encounter. So you could look at a crystal material here. Why is this crystalline? Because in this, it has the highest, you know, or very actually very high, relatively high, you know, Young's modulus versus the amorphous material right here, which is already going to start. Well, it could it should be a little bit uh, lower. So don't worry too much about. Uh, this is just kind of again relatively speaking, because there are definitely some amorphous brittle polymers that might have a higher Young's modulus in that glassy regime, but. You can see it goes through the TG transition right here, and you can see the crystal material has a higher TG than this amorphous material, and then a melting transition as well. Now, the interesting thing here in terms of the mechanical behavior of polymer materials is this cross link. So, you can see here we're in our glass regime. Again, your thermal sets are cross links. This is probably an elastic. That's why it has a little bit lower uh, Young's modulus, typically, is the case. Again, it's hard to. Uh, Hard to pigeonhole polymer materials. This is probably a thermal set. But these have permanent crosslinks. So they are chemical, you know, usually it's chemical or physical crosslinks, but it's permanent. Almost like in the melt, but very permanent. So you can see here, we go through our glass transition because all polymers have a glass transition, but we do not see this melting transition here. Instead, where this X occurs, we thermally degrade the polymer. That's what's essentially happening here. And really, this becomes like, this is kind of thermally degraded as well, but you'll see kind of this drop off uh, as well for amorphous materials. But you can see, again, how this, you know, again, here, there is no melting transition for these polymers. They're chemically crosslinked, so they are just going to, you know, they will hold, as you increase temperature, they're going to hold this rubbery plateau until they eventually thermally degrade. So that's how you could kind of look at and uh, deduce um, some of these values uh, as a function of temperature. That is how the stiffness, again, uh, and again, you can kind of think of it less thermal energy, all these different barriers kind of, uh, you know, again, uh, to deform. So the modulus of polymer will also be time dependent. So this is borne out empirically again. Experimentally, you'll see kind of the same idea. So let's go back to actually, because uh, there's a couple of critical statements that are nicely hidden here. So high temperatures, again, amorphous polymers will basically fall to zero. Cross-linked, only the cross-linked, um, again, there's a different capacity in the rubbery moduli. Um, we'll have this non-zero modulus at high temperatures, again, variant, basically because of the permanent crosslinks. Instead, if not, the polymer is just going to flow. Um, so it's this kind of, you know, again, that transition, from, that glass transition is all about the onset of glass behavior due to this change in the characteristic relaxation time. And that is going to change. Um, relaxation time uh, will basically, you know, we saw how that, you know, basically in our Debro number, we saw the characteristic relaxation time versus the experimental time, um, given a stress effect, and the glass transition can be interpreted, you know, again, when you go from this, uh, as you change that relaxation time with temperature, um, or 
you know, in time as well. So uh, basically, as you add, provide more or less thermal energy to overcome those barriers to flow. So same thing, but you could, again, you could change the time scale, uh, the same idea here. So you could obtain this glassy behavior without having to change temperature. It's the same idea. We're just going over again and again this time, temperature, and strain rate equivalence. We could all, all of these parameters we could utilize in order to change the mechanical properties of these polymeric material. We can make it because these will affect your Debro number. You know, this strain rate we saw, it will change, you know, that's effectively, and this time, you know, a polymer, this is relatively fixed, although you can change it a, a little bit, but in terms of frequencies and these things, but we can change the mechanical properties of our polymer with these three parameters, time, temperature, and strain rate uh, equivalents. So you can obtain this glassy behavior without having to change temperature, but you can change the glassy behavior or make it glassy or rubbery if we change just temperature and we get time constant. So you could kind of see um, it's going to be very, um, a, a graph of this, you know, log V versus temperature is going to be very qualitatively the same as this versus time. And again, it's going to reflect the origin of this glass transition, which again is this percolation theory, this jumping back from glassy or rubbery states. Um, you also see kind of, again, um, this ductile brittle transition, which you've probably seen in other materials as well. So, excellent. So, uh, there's going to be lots of different, you know, when we look at the, that um, so log E versus log time, there's going to be different plateaus. And again, that's just going to depend on, you know, different plateaus, different TGs. That's going to depend on, again, the percent of crystallinity, the type of polymer, the chemical structure. Um, so, it's going to, you know, uh, it's going to vary by over a factor of, you know, 100, you know, as the crystallinity changes. Again, there's going to be a large order of magnitude changes depending on the polymeric material that you're uh, dealing with. So, we uh, very different moduli, even, you know, basically, you know, just for semi-crystalline polymers alone, regardless of, you know, amorphous versus crystalline. Um, so, there's going to be this proportion of amorphous to crystalline regimes, and it could change, you know, your elastic moduli dramatically. So, if you get a plot like this, Green. I do this blue. I know that my red has the largest, you know, degree of crystallinity. If this was, you know, so let's say LDPE or polyethylene, I would know that this is HDPE, and this would be my low density polyethylene. Yep. So again, same kind of idea here. Red level lows. So. Next time, we are going to get a little bit into, uh, actually very briefly, into time temperature equivalence and WLF theory, Williams, Landau, and uh, Ferry uh, theory. Um, so we'll get into that in the next video. So the key idea here, again, time, temperature, strain rate equivalence. We could see how the Young's modulus this is pretty, you know, fairly intuitive, I think, for uh, students. And the same, the key idea here is um, amorphous polymers, crystalline polymers, they, uh, your Young's modulus will eventually drop to zero as your polymer flows and becomes really like a liquid. Uh, again, this is a melting transition here, and this is just basically viscous flow. I mean, just purely, it, be, it just becomes a literal liquid that flows. Um, so, and then for your crosslink, for your elastomer polymers, they, you kind of are, you never reach this kind of uh, basically zero value for your Young's modulus. So, next time. We'll get into a little bit into WLF theory, and then we will finish up uh, viscoelasticity. Congratulations. <laughs> I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.